Hello and welcome to another video and good afternoon from Barcelona in northeastern Spain here in Catalonia. I've just come down from Paris, France on a 300 km per hour TGV double decker high speed train in first class and today we're going to find out why I think it's a better option than flying. Enjoy the video. Welcome to Paris Gare de Lyon, France's second busiest railway station serving over 150 million people a year. The station's been here since 1849 and the building is really quite something to look at. There are actually two train sheds here called Hall 1 and Hall 2 and the station is the departure point for high-speed services to the south, many of which stop at Lyon, hence the name. Oh, and I can't resist telling you that there is a wonderful patisserie here. Not that we'll need it. There's a cafe car on the train and you can even pre-order lunch. More on that a bit later. We're leaving from the newer Hall 2 today and our train will be formed of two units which are joined together but advertised as separate trains on the board, one to Montpellier and one to Barcelona, Spain. Boarding begins about 20 minutes before departure and I'm afraid to say Gare de Lyon is typically chaotic insisting on pre-departure ticket scans for over 1,000 passengers. For comparison, that's basically two Emirates A380 passenger loads all squeezing through in just 20 minutes. Ouch. So as I said earlier, the train is made up of two halves. The half at the back here is the one that's gonna terminate at Montpellier. And because I'm going all the way to Barcelona, my train is the front one furthest from the train shed. What is going on here? This isn't a great start. Boarding has stopped because of a suspect package on the train and we'll have a 20 minute delay as a result while that gets sorted. But trust me, it gets better and it's still better than flying. There's no security check, no need to check in your bags and you get to see the whole route from the ground. Well, that was exciting. Time to find my carriage again. I'm really regretting my choice not to pack a jacket for this trip. It's blooming cold out here. Finding your seat is really easy. The carriage numbers are displayed by the doors and many passengers, including me, pick seats off a seat map so we know exactly where we're headed anyway. I absolutely recommend heading upstairs if you can. The views are so much better, especially as in some places the high speed line has high sided walls for soundproofing. First class is available for a relatively modest premium. My ticket cost 99 euro over the standard class fare of 82 euro. And for that you get spacious, more comfortable two plus one seating. I've gone for a club duo seat today and I'm in seat 92. A small number of face-to-face -face seats are available. These tables of four are great for families, but most are pairs or solo seats. And it's the same downstairs too. On board, there is plenty of luggage space, although it does get full quite quickly on this popular tourist route. One downside of double-decker trains is the lack of overhead rack space too. I just about managed to fit my rucksack in on these TGV duplexes, but even a cabin case will be too big. We leave about 20 minutes behind schedule, but very comfortably seated in first class and with a long journey to look forward to. Flying Paris to Barcelona takes about five hours between city centers. But when I traveled Air France and Iberia wanted 150 euro, and this on the train is a more pleasant way to go anyway. Our TGV should take six hours, 54 minutes to complete this 1100 kilometer trip using high speed and conventional lines via Nîmes, Montpellier and the south coast through Perpignan towards Barcelona. One thing I love about taking the train is that delays are much less consequential. We're barely out of Paris when bad news comes through of damage to overhead wires on the high speed line and we'll need to head via Dijon on the slower conventional route, costing us about 90 minutes of delay. It's actually my first experience of a big delay on SNCF, but it doesn't really matter. I'm on an internet connected high speed train with a cafe car. The internet is free for everyone on the train, by the way, and the page even contains a GPS, timetable and delay data, and some in-flight, or should we say on-train, entertainment if you want to pass the time.
As far as the seating goes, well, you get a nice large table at these duo seats. Solos get a, solos get a big flip down one instead. There's a charge point for your laptop or phone and the extra hour and a half can be used productively at least. The duplexes are double deckers and far from the most spacious trains but I rather love the cozy feel they have and they're one of my favourite types of high speed train to ride. The seats even have an electronic recline function too if you fancy kicking back and relaxing. Remember this ticket in first class was a third cheaper than flying economy. We soon top out at around 300 km per hour and that is quite a speed. We're on the LGV Sud-Est, the first ever stretch of high-speed French line dating from 1983. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, an award-winning virtual private network. Now, there are a ton of good reasons to use Surfshark, from leveraging lower prices online to protecting your online identity. Among the dozens of reasons Surfshark is an essential part of my travel arsenal is its ability to unblock blocked content, including video calling. Now, in some countries, video calling is just not possible. It's either banned or made impossible by the internet regulations there. And even if you're in a country that does allow it, some hotel Wi-Fi networks will not allow you to access video calling capabilities at all. And that's where Surfshark comes in. Just flick on the virtual location and hey presto, you can get into Zoom, Teams or whichever video calling app you use and maintain your productivity on the move or even talk to friends and family online. It's up to you all the while staying safe while online. Surfshark is an incredible tool. It's my Swiss army knife and it's available for a special deal. Not only is it insanely cheap at the cost of less than a cup of coffee per month, you can also avail yourself of three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN by going to surfshark.deals forward slash winginit and using code winginit at checkout. Go ahead and check it out. As we've been informed, there is a diversion and we leave the high speed line temporarily near Passilly and trundle on the lower speed conventional line via Dijon and Macon instead. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Uh, we are actually crossing the Macon city. Then you, uh, we will uh, record the high speed way and uh, we'll be able to tell you how many minutes delayed we've got. Uh, thank you for your attention. Finally, after Macon, we rejoin the high-speed line and cross the River Saône. Incidentally, this bridge marks the dividing point between the departments of Saône-et-Loire and Ain. There is one cafe car in each of the two train sets, serving both first and standard class. It is popular. Food isn't included in first class fares in France, but there's a decent selection available for purchase and here's my trick to cutting the very long lines you see here at midday. Don't be like these people. You can pre-order online and choose a 15 minute time slot for your order to be ready. The choices for lunch aren't bad at all. I went for the meal deal curated by two-star Michelin chef Thierry Marx, but you can order anything in any combination from the menu if you like. You just collect at the top of the line here, and I've used this a few times and it's worked really well each time. The cafe is such a great facility. This is a long trip. The opportunity to go somewhere different, stretch your legs and change your environment is just as useful as actually eating lunch in my opinion. So here we are finally at the first stop Valence TGV station here. Um, it's one of these strategic out of town high speed stations on the TGV network and we are 93 minutes late so far. A quick reminder, it's free to subscribe. Go down, hit that button and click the bell to be notified of every new video I post and join a community of over a quarter of a million other trip report enthusiasts just like you.
Our next stop is Nîmes, which has the nickname French Rome. It's almost unrecognisable from the France we've just seen. The change in vegetation and architecture to Mediterranean is really stark and hits you as soon as you enter the city. It's a city on my list to visit properly someday. The south of France could not be more different to Paris, and the coastal section for the next couple of hours is the real highlight of the trip. Along the south coast, just after Montpellier, there are a series of étangs. These are small lakes and sit right alongside the Mediterranean Sea. In this beautiful spring weather, the train trip is really quite eye-catching. You just don't get to see this from the plane. This part of the route is not yet fully high speed, but due to be upgraded soon. The station buildings and the extant water pump for steam trains here in Béziers show this line's been here since the mid-1850s. My number one top tip for sightseeing on this route is to try and be on the right-hand side of the train as you leave Béziers to catch the city's magnificent cathedral dating from the 13th century. We're now heading straight down the coast for Perpignan, picking up the high-speed line again from there and towards the Pyrenees. This train used to take a more coastal route via Cerber, a route still used by local trains, but the 5.2 mile Perthus Tunnel opened in 2010, drastically shortening and straightening the route and linking Spain and France's high-speed network. This is a relatively rare example of an international tunnel. We've entered the tunnel in France and when we leave it, will be in Spain. And now we're coming to the end of the journey. It's a good time to let you know how I booked these tickets and how much it cost me. I booked directly using SNCF Connect, which does have a slightly strange interface. Weirdly, you have to treat it a bit like a search engine, but it is the most useful site to use, in my opinion, for this trip. Prices for my morning departure can be as low as 59 euro, but be warned, this is a popular train in the summer and it can sell out or be very expensive. The best part of this site is the seat picker. I was in seat 92, car 13, but you get to choose the exact seat, upstairs or downstairs, which is just great if you like a bit of reassurance. Bear in mind also, if the ticket is over 150 euro, you will save a third off using a 49 euro carte avantage discount card from SNCF, available to anyone living anywhere, and you will save money immediately in one single trip. We're now entering Barcelona, and the end of another epic rail trip, even if the weather isn't spectacular. For the delay, which ended up being an hour, I got back 25% of the ticket cost. This is one of my top picks for high-speed rail in Europe. It is a wonderful journey with plenty of time to soak up the scenery and I absolutely recommend it. Thanks so much for watching and thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring the video. Don't make your internet privacy a lottery, get an exclusive Surfshark deal. Don't forget to enter code WINGINIT for three months extra for free of Surfshark VPN. And now I've partnered with Bright Trip to bring you this practical guide to understanding trains in Europe, how they work, how they can work for you, and how you can use them to make the most out of your journeys.